Welcome, welcome back. Let's keep going here with MBT. We're uh, deep into, I believe it's turn seven. And I'll just uh, pop this shot off here. Uh, but before I do that and explain that kill, let's let's have a look at what's going on in the map uh, now that I, I think about it. So <clears throat> it's been inter interesting here. Uh, the I'm trying to get this on the side here. The British allocated all of their forces here and screened off left flank, pushed in some uh, troops to try and uh, at least stop uh, the Soviets from rushing here and here so that, uh, you know, whoever was going to cross the open ground was uh, probably going to get chewed up under Overwatch. And so the infantry was uh, in place here and then took full cover <clears throat> and actually did a pretty good job uh, in holding off. While uh, tanks then approached, I, I brought a troop of tanks in. There's three here. And they helped support suppressing and breaking down these two squads here. This guy is reduced, as is this guy. And uh, he's, uh, his suppression marker will come off the end of this turn if he rolls well enough. <clears throat> and I had the Soviets have one guy up here as well. So that forced the Soviets, who were really looking to try and take the full board because they had to get all seven bridges to get... 100 VPs, and the Brits decided, hey, look, VCs say you only get the 100 VPs if you capture all of them, so they've elected to try and keep two, or at the worst case, one, and they're uh, in good shape to do that at this point. So that's pretty nifty, pretty interesting, and uh, the Soviets then pivoted, brought all their tanks across the field, and they're now here, looking to try and make a rush here and potentially here. In the meantime, whoops, excuse me. In the meantime, let's just get the camera squared away. In the meantime, this tank has moved up and adjacent to these guys looking for a shot, not knowing that this was under Overwatch, of course. So that's going to be a little surprise for for them. Hopefully they'll survive, survive the RPG-22 round. Now, let's get back over to this, uh, this shot here. <clears throat> because... ERA armor is pretty interesting. The, the little uh, blocks of ex basically explosive that sort of uh, soften the blow, as the case would be, uh, from shots from uh, either both kinetic and uh, CE-based uh, rounds. Now, uh, this particular tank, the Chieftain, can fire both. Uh, we chose to fire APFSDS <clears throat> because these T-62s, have light ERA, and light ERA is not going to give them uh, a bonus from what I'm reading in the rules yet again. You'll spend a lot of time on page 27 with explosive reactive armor and CE type armor. Uh, at least I have found I have him anyway. And, uh, and the CE ammo, of course, uh, on the following page, page 28. So nevertheless, so no ERA. So all I need to do is get a penetrating shot and we'll be able to kill this tank more than likely. So I roll a seven, great roll. I learned, you know, we don't even need to look up. We don't need to do modifiers. We know that that is indeed a hit. So we can scoot that aside. And in the handful of dice I rolled, this was going to be my target, uh, the location uh, data. So that's a whole front hit. So we don't need to see that anymore. But uh, if, if this was indeed, if there was ERA, these guys would, uh, if they had heavy ERA, because it works for both kinetic and chemical, then we would roll a six. No, sorry, we would roll a die, and if we rolled under seven, so we had a 70% 70, 70 chance, basically, of the, uh, the ERA blocks being in the right spot uh, for this to be active, so that would have, that would have given these guys a, uh, a bonus to their armor. So you would um, have a multiplier effect on their armor. Now, depending on the type of ERA, the multiplier will be different. But nevertheless, not relevant, away it goes. So then we look at four. And four is the number that is going to uh, tell us whether we kill the unit or not. And so we go to KO, that's three to six. A four is uh, because we've got a hit, right? And let me just, before we go there, sorry. So we we know we had a penetrating shot. We have at short range, 101 for penetration. The armor for the Soviets on hull front 
is 53. Oops, you can't see that. How's that? 53, see the whole front there? Uh, so 101 is greater than 53, boom, off you go. Uh, so it's a penetrating shot. Now, it is, now we need to know what type of uh, uh, damage we do with that uh, armor penetrating round. And on a four, we get a kill, we get a knockout, right? So that will kill that unit. He will come off the board and there will be a, a wreck marker there. I know I didn't bring all the trays of markers, so I'm, I'm out of markers. I, I don't have any left. Uh, I've got one brew up marker that, I, that I've been using uh, for the one brew up that's occurred. So that's a knockout there. Now, interestingly enough, if that had it been ERA, light ERA, and it had it worked, you would have multiplied the Soviet armor value by uh, 53 by 1.6, <clears throat> which would have been 83. 101 is still greater than 83, so it still would have been a penetrating hit, and it still would have been a kill with the end, end roll. So it's pretty interesting, huh? Uh, lots of dice to roll if you really want to. Uh, you know, you, the great, as I've said many, many, many times, if you like tactical games that want to give you the nuance and the feel of, of not only tank warfare, but even even the uh, even these uh, infantry uh, actions, a little bit more abstracted, perhaps, when you start doing uh, assaults and stuff like that. You know, you're not throwing satchel charges. You can't, there, but there are grenades and RPGs and, you know, mines and cover and all that sort of fun stuff. There's all sorts of modifiers. So, but if you, if you really are interested in uh, either World War II or modern combat for uh, this scale, you know, individual tanks and squads, uh, squads of guys, the key thing with this rule set is it lets you pick and choose the advanced rules that you want to use. They all work in, uh, with each other. None of them are tied to each other. So that, for instance, uh, there are spotting ranges, right? So I can't see this guy from here to here potentially. But if I want to use the advanced spotting ranges rule where I take the, the, the quality of the guys and the type of terrain these guys are in and look at the, the distance uh, on the spotting range, and then I could roll some percentile dice and see if my guys are well trained enough to spot the tank in the light woods. And you're like, oh yeah, they got them, right? Uh, are you in command range? Do you want to use the command rules? Do you want to use the um, morale rules? Do you want to use all sorts of little nuancey bits and pieces? There's even a role you can make for uh, sort of uh, an abstraction of uh, radio control, radio uh, interference, so that to one side or the other may impact the, the radio uh, communications, which will reduce the number of commands that you can place on the map in a given turn. Uh, so lots and lots of really interesting nuance. I, you know, I, I'm a huge fan of this game. I don't play it as much as I'd like to. It, it, because solo, it's just not as much fun. There's, there's, you don't have the, uh, the unknowns, right? Because you kind of know what all the commands are. I'm trying to use a little bit of common sense here and that, you know, given that these guys are suppressed, this dude is uh, rolling up on them and he's going to have Adam next turn anyway, not knowing that these uh, fellas decided to, you know, go into Overwatch mode. So they, they will get a shot at this tank at point blank with an RPG. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, it's, it's going to be literally hit or miss uh, if, they, if they will connect because they're suppressed. So that's going to it's going to cause a problem for them. Uh, in, in, with their die roll. That's going to be a pretty tough shot to make. Nevertheless, there you have it. Thought I'd share that with you. We'll catch up in a little bit. Uh, we're very close to being done here. Uh, we'll see what happens with the tanks. If these tanks can knock out enough units here, then potentially, potentially, we will have uh, uh, an extension of the game into the full 15 turns. But it's likely going to be over by turn 10. Just given that the uh, losses have racked up, two T-62s, four BTRs. Um, I don't know there's a BMP in there, but I couldn't find another BTR marker and I was in a hurry when I packed. So <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, pretty close, pretty close to being done for, for the uh, Soviet side. They're, they're running out of options uh, on the map. Uh, there's still stuff going on up here, of course. Uh, I've got a ATGM covering this space here. Just waiting for an opportunity to close in and maybe try and take this bridge if I need to. 
Uh, but they've also got an ATGM unit uh, parked up over there as well. Uh, as part of the game plan adjustment, the pivot, they left that there and brought uh, all the tanks down into November 22, uh, the, uh, the village here. All right, going to let you go. Ciao.